Grant, welcome back. How, how does it feel to uh, secure your return to Doncaster Rovers? Brilliant. It's been um, really exciting, obviously, having conversations with, with Gavin and David. Um, and once I heard of the interest, you know, it was a, it was a tremendous opportunity for myself. Um, I've enjoyed the break. You know, it's been probably about seven odd years now of, of non-stop management, but um, having that little break for the last three or four months has been, has been great for me. Uh, I've learned a lot in that time. I've uh, visited various different clubs and managers and been at quite a lot of games. Uh, played a bit of golf um, and, and sort of way winded down a little bit and enjoyed it. Um, but now I've got that hunger back and I feel ready for, for this challenge. All that's and refresh to, uh, to get back in. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's just a shame it's come at, at this time that, you know, I'd love to be working with the players now and seeing the staff. But what it does do, it gives us a chance to, you know, have a look at everything in a bigger picture. And um, hopefully we can put a, you know, a really good team and squad together that the fans can be proud of. What was it that attracted you to come back? I've, you know, once, once the, the, the phone call and the conversations came and I had a chat with my wife, you know, she, one of the first things she said to me, you know, it was one of the happiest I've seen you at Doncaster. Um, and that really hit home with me, really, you know, and um, I love my time here. You know, we had a, a half decent season in terms of getting to the top six. And, you know, I always set standards high. You know, I felt as if we failed. And, and I said that after the game at Charlton. Um, but... What I will say is, you know, the time I had here um, with the group of players, the staff that we had, with David, with Gavin, uh, with Terry, you know, and it was, uh, it was a great time and I enjoyed every minute of it and I'm looking forward to, to repaying that to them. Just thinking back to that last game that you were in charge of, breathless, incredible evening, obviously ending in, in disappointment, as you mentioned. Does it feel that there's a bit of unfinished business from Abs your Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I've, I love a challenge. I love to get my, my teeth stuck into... Um, proving people wrong, um, you know, making sure that we have got a squad together that are united as one, um, and we will, you know, do everything we can to to, to put a, put performances on the pitch that the fans can be proud of. Um, make sure the fans are behind us from from minute one and day one, um, which that's a byproduct of how we play and how we go about it and and, and results. You know, I'm here. I like to win. Um, I want to make sure the fans understand that. Um, I'm not the greatest of losers, but I don't get too low when we lose and we try and move on to the next one. Um, so it's a, it's a really good challenge for us. That was a big part of when you were last here, proving people wrong. You, you mentioned it an awful lot. Do you feel there'll be an element of that w with the team this season, starting from the, from the level that they're at? Absolutely. I mean, look, this division, I think you need character. There's, there's no two ways about it. If you look at the teams that's been promoted, the Leighton Orients, the... the you know, the, the Stevenages, the Northamptons, they've got character in there. You know, they've got people who know this division and probably the one above. Um, so, you know, once we get to the nuts and bolts of, of the recruitment side, once I speak to the cops and, and the head of recruitment and Gavin and David and, and, and we get to the bottom of what we think we need, um, then we'll be going all out for that. You know, it's important that we have a real good character characteristics about our team. Ability is important, don't get me wrong, but I think you have to mix it in this division. I think you have to be able to play, you have to be able to play over presses, so it's important. Will there be an element from, from yourself of proving people wrong? Absolutely, I mean look, I've, I always go into a job with, with my eyes wide open. Um, I feel as if I've been um, semi-successful at my time at Hull and, and winning the league and, and here at Doncaster. Um, disappointed, obviously I couldn't finish the job that I set out at Peterborough, but that's football, that's life. Um, and you move on with, you know, don't hold any grudges. It's more of me um, getting to work and getting my teeth stuck into to this job and I'm, I'm delighted to be back here. Just addressing your departure before from the club, obviously that opportunity to, to go to all. Obviously at the time left a, a few people saw, uh, supporters, uh, for you making that decision. What can you tell us about your, your decision to leave uh, those years ago? It was, a, it was off the back of obviously the Charlton game. We were already ahead in terms of bringing players into the football club, i.e. We had, we had agreed a deal with Ben Sheaf, we'd agreed a deal with Rhys James, we'd agreed a deal with Brad Halliday. I was working hard to try and recruit for the squad. I remember speaking to you quite a bit about it, you know, in the off season um, of, of where we are. We were ahead of the, ahead of the curve on, on another two players. Uh, I seem to remember, but when I left, they, they didn't materialise. I just felt at the time that 
I was so hurt and disappointed. I've always grown up to to to, to want to be able to have that real winning mentality. Um, and I, I was desperate to get this club to the championship, and I was just so disappointed that we didn't quite get there. Um, the opportunity to, to go to the championship, um, and to be brutally honest with you, financial for myself and my family um, was important. Um, I had nothing to bad to say about this football club. I had a tremendous working relationship with David and Gavin and, and Terry, uh, and all the staff, and it was a big decision. And it was one I never took lightly, you know, it took me a, quite a quite a few days to make speaking to my family and and, and Cliff and, and a few friends so um, they were the reasons. Incredible roller coaster time at Hull. What did you learn from, from that spell and, and the one that followed at Peterborough as well? Again the beauty the beauty of football is is, is I you know you you win football games with players and players who understand they're clever, they think they think like you, they understand how you want them to play. We had that right up until Christmas at at, at Hull. Um, and like anything, you know, when you, when you lose top players, it's very difficult to to replace. And obviously losing Jared Bowen, Camille Grzycki when we did in that January. And I always remember Ia Balam saying to me, you know, it, it, at the end of that season, it was difficult losing your goals, your threat. And obviously we, we went down. Um, but we had a real belief that we could go back up again. And that desire was, was back with me again to, to, again, to prove people wrong. To prove to, to, to prove to people that I am good enough, um, my team is good enough, and we done it. You know, we again we speak about this is a really op good opportunity for me to do something similar that I did at Hull, i.e., bringing in right people, the right character, the right mentality to to want to win, to want to push, to want to get promoted. Do you feel at this stage that you're a better manager than what you were when you left? I think you'll always, you know, every up and down in, in football management, you always take the highs and the lows. I think I've managed. I'm not sure, it must be nearly 300 odd games, 400 odd games now. Um, so I feel as if I have got real good experience of, of a lot of different ways, um, i.e. dealing with the board or dealing with players or uh, dealing with the agents or whatever it may be. I feel as if I've seen a lot in my short time. Um, not short, well it is short time, seven years as a manager. Um, there's been promotions, there's been relegations, there's been seconds, there's been transfer embargoes, there's been semi-final misses that you know there's there's been everything I've seen everything in that seven years and I feel as if that is only going to improve me as I move on is that going to be a help in terms of you mentioned dealing with the board dealing with stuff like that people that you know that you've mentioned that you've had a good relationship in the past it allows you to get hit the ground running really yeah I think you just need to be open and honest you know and and, and that's the relationship I have with with Gavin and David um, you know it's open and honest making sure that people understand how you want to work what we need to, to, to be a success this season, or next season I should say, um, and then everyone can buy into that and, and I think that's important. I know you've been obviously watching uh, and, and, and assessing the team, what do you make to where the team is at the moment, obviously we've come to the end of the season, but where, where they've sort of been at these last uh, last couple of months? I've, I've seen quite a lot over the, over the last you know, a few days of, of, of the team, um, individually and collectively. Um, Obviously, look, it's been a difficult season and it's never nice to see anybody lose their job, but unfortunately, it's the nature of football, um, hence why I'm set here today. Um, but, you know, there's there's been quite a lot of analysis going on from myself and um, to making sure that we get it right, i.e. who we feel can stay and help us and the ones who, you know, we don't, basically, and that's the, just the, the nuts and bolts of it, really. Um, so there will be conversations over the next few days with myself, Gavin, David, to to show them exactly you know what we need going forward, um, and then we can take that into next week when we meet the players. What does this current group need, in your opinion? Um, this this league is is it's it's unforgiving really at times. You know you have to you have to be able to mix it. Um, you know I spoke about the the Stephen Eads and the Leighton Orient. There's two different style of plays there, but. You know, both of them can mix it. The, the teams that's got promoted at Northampton quite similar. Um, let's get one thing straight. I'm here to, to get out of this league. Um, so that will be the message to the group um, when they come back from pre come back uh, for pre season. We will be recruiting for that to making sure that we have got a squad that's capable of pushing um, as far as we can go and as high as we can go in this division. Um, and hopefully that will be a you know a successful year for us.
Looking forward to meeting the players, getting them in in the next few weeks. Yeah, months. I mean, there's obviously a few familiar faces there. Um, and, you know, when I talk about characters, there's, you know, two just spring off the, the end of my tongue and Tommy Rowe and, and Tom Anderson, who I've worked with before, you know, tremendous characters. And John Taylor, another boy who I've worked with at Peterborough, good character, you know. So um, I'm looking forward to meeting the rest of them, getting to, to know them and how they, you know, how they work and how they go about their day to day business. And then Tommy and Tom in particular, you know you've got two leaders at your oh, disposal already. For sure. I mean, they were leaders when I was here the first time and their experiences of what they've seen over the last three, four years is, is just going to make them even better. So um, I'm looking forward to getting a little insight from them and what they feel um, the group needs because I think sometimes it's important to speak to you know, th those type of characters and um, you do get an honest uh, response sometimes. There's obviously still decisions to be made on players that have reached the end of the contracts. Are you pleased to be able to, to shape things yourself in, at this stage? Yeah, I mean, again, those 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 conversations will happen with the players. Um, it, it's nice that we can, you know, keep the players that we feel can help us next year. Um, Mould some players around, i.e. the characteristics and uh, the pace and aggression that you need in this division uh, around that. And hopefully we can we can have a good season. What have you made to the, the resources at your disposal to, to help you shape the squad going forward? Um, yeah, look, it's always important. Um, and that was one of the converse, one of the first conversations I had with, with David uh, and, and Gavin. Um, what's available and what's there for us to use will certainly help us to, to put a good squad together for next season. Um, it's about, you know, now myself, Cops, the head of recruitment, Gavin, David, all of us buying into to making sure we get the right people into this football club and uh, that'll, that'll be the, the main focus. You'll have been made aware of Terry's decision to put extra funds into the playing budget. Does that show you that the ambition is shared from the top that, that you'll share to get this team out Absolutely. of this Absolutely. Liam, I wouldn't be here if, if it wasn't me and, and I'm not one to sit in the mid-table and, and lead to, let's be honest. And That's not me being arrogant. I, I want to be successful um, and I want my players to think they got as well. Was that a decision for you to, to come down to League Two, your first time managing at, at, at this level? Was that a, a big decision for you to take or is it the overall project? It's more itself? the club, yeah. you know, it's more this, this club. I had a really good relationship with the fans, I had a really good relationship with the people inside the club um, and who owned the football club and, and Gavin. And, you know, that was really important for me. Um, you know, I want to make sure that we are all singing on the same hymn sheet. Um, that's from the top to the bottom and that's really clear and key for us from the minute the players come back from pre for, uh, for pre-season. I think you kind of touched on it a little bit, but more in sort of emphatic terms, you, your priorities in recruitment, it's adding that character and that ability to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, it, absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, look, ability is really, really important, but I think character has to be the, the main necessity for, for us in terms of having a real, good, uh, a real good season and a real good promotion push. Um, style of play? That was a very exciting season when you were here last, you know, the relentlessness, mm -hmm. the aggression, the, the, the attacking. Has anything changed? Are we expect the same thing from Absolutely. you? Absolutely. You know, the way we work every single day will be about that. Um, obviously, football is big on transitions at the minute. And, you know, if I think back to the last six, five, six, seven years of, of my management career, my team has always played on the edge, um, i.e. we will be high energy, high pressing. That will that'll all come from what we do on the training ground every single day. Um, we need players to be working, running, fighting um, as much as we can really, um, as well as adding that little bit of quality around it. Um, so it comes from what we do every day on the training ground. What do you make to the landscape in League 2 headed into, uh, into next season? It's going to be tough, don't, don't get me wrong, it's going to be a very tough division. Um, there's some big clubs in there, you know, if not kind to go up and wreck them and, and, and things like that. It's two teams that's got over well over 100 points in the National League, which is an unbelievable achievement for both of them. And surely, sure, they'll be back financially as well. Um, and, and obviously, the teams is in that top six now. There's only going to be one of them who goes up. So it's uh, it's going to be a tough, a really tough division. Teams coming down from League One as well. Um, you know, like Safaris, so Green, Morecambe, I'm sure they'll be really competitive. So we'll, we'll give it a good go and we'll see how we get on. That's basically what it was last time you were here, weren't it? No, that expectations weren't necessarily for you to be right up there fighting, but that's that's what you managed yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a, that's that's probably just the nature of, of how the seasons uh, folded, you know, and unfolded. Sorry, um, but you know, we'll be clear with the players in terms of what we want to do, how we want to work. This, this is what we'll be doing, you know, and um, we need the players to buy into that, and also, you know, the staff here. 
and your expectations firmly to be up there and fighting. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's I've always said and I've always gone by, you know, you reach for the stars and you don't quite get there, then at least you've given it a go. So we will be reaching for, for, for as high as we can in this division. I'm here next season. Are you?